Hello, Code Simplifier's fam. How are you all? Best from Code Simplifier Coding School is here with another video for you all. We are having a SharePoint list and a list of records, which we are trying to use PowerShell scripts to automate the task for us. But when we are having an issue, when we're trying to do the job, let's see what the issue is, solve it and learn how to not do the same mistake again. Are you all ready for it? Let's get into it. Open up your Visual Studio code and write a file with whatever name you're comfortable with, but the extension of the file has to be PS number one digit. So here we are going to set up three different variables. One of them is our site URL, an empty string. We need our list name, sign it to an empty string, and we need our local CSV file as well and we are going to assign that one as well. So we will leave the value for these variables an empty string for now, but we are going to get back and resolve them. And below down code, so here we are having a connect to PNP online. We are going to use our URL, which in this case is going to be site URL, and the type of switch is going to be interactive. Below that, we are going to add PNP list item. PNP list item. We need our list name, which in this case is our list name. We have the variable set up. And we are going to values at open and close Kelly brackets. And here we need to use our SharePoint columns name. I'll show you what I mean. Equals to our local CSV file. You're getting the columns from your local CSV file. In our case, it's going to be product ID, if I'm not wrong. So let's check it out what we have here. So open your CSV file. We have the product ID. We're calling the our local CSV file dot product ID. And where the left hand side of the sign variable comes from, it comes from our SharePoint column name, which in this case is product ID as well. So we are having, we don't need those, and we have product ID as well. So you putting a semicolons, then we have the product name in our SharePoint equals to local CSV file does product name, semicolon, and we have the product price, if I'm not wrong, in our SharePoint, we are going to assign it to local CSV file dot product price. And the last variable does not need any semicolons. So let's check we have the right name. The left hand side are our SharePoint column names. We have a product ID, product name and product price. Product ID, product name and product price. And the right hand side, we are calling our local CSV file and we're calling the column names, which are assigned to product ID, product name, and product price. And everything is assigned into the variable. Now, we need to put values for those strings. Where the site URL comes from, go to your SharePoint list, and you need to have your SharePoint URL up to the lists in your um, alliance. So, you put, paste it here. The list name comes from your SharePoint, which in this case is my list. So write down my list. And for the local CSV file, we need to call the location of the CSV file we have, which in this case is this file we are having it. And here's my CSV file location. I'm copying the address, putting it here. And when you put the in a forward slash, you have to have your CSV file. And one property I missed here, and that is we need to import the CSV file to be able to use it. Open your PowerShell, run it as an administrator. So here we need to find the location of where the CSV file is stored, as well as our uh, the file we're using here, which in this case is invalid number value fixed for me. And it depends what you call yours. You have you are going to call it. So when I'm writing invalid, 
forward slash. This is the file name I am going to run. I'm pretty happy with everything. Press enter. Wait to create the connection. The account is same and now we should receive an error. So here is the error. Let me zoom in. So invalid number value. And that is the error we are going to fix today. Go back to your Visual Studio codes and above your connect PNP line. So we are going to write a try catch and adding everything from here, connect PNP online and put it within your try. And here we need to add the PNP list here. The key here is we need to write a for each loop. So write down for each and you choosing the for each, the second one and press enter. So here the current item name, leave it as it is, or you can replace it with whatever you want. But the collection here is going to be replaced with our local CSV file. So copy that name, insert it here. And we need to just cut, cut the add PNP list item one more time and leave it below that. So we can just take off the comment here. And here in our catch, we need to write a write host and we're writing a message. Uh, we are just typing an error message. So what is the type of the message we are going to write down? It's going to be exception dot message. And the color for that one is foreground. It should be red. So if there isn't a message, it should be as a red. So after the for each loop, once everything's ran and successfully, so you need to write a host, write host, to let the client know what happened. So here the message is going to be all records have been added to the list. And the foreground for that one is going to be green. So everything is fine. And one more thing we have to bear in mind is we need to replace a local CSV file with the current item name. So copy that one and paste it here one more time and here is the last one so save before we run just quickly refresh what we've done so we are running a try catch so we are trying this line of codes from here to there if there wasn't any issue everything should be um, running as what we expect if there is an any issue we are going to let the client know what the error message is and we throw in an exception so within the for each loop we are getting each record in our local CSV file and we read the value of it and assign it to our SharePoint records. So save your work, go back to your PowerShell, put the up arrow key, it brings up the last file you ran and you just enter one more time and wait to see what is going on. As you see, all records have been added to the list and that is the message we wrote here. So technically we have to have all the records in our SharePoint list. Go to your SharePoint list. If you don't see anything, do a couple of refresh on your list. If there is nothing, the last thing, all you need to do is hold on the control on your keyboard and press F5. So that will refresh the cache. As you see the product ID, product name, product price, as per expected to verify everything we've done was right. So here's my Excel file, 1363, 1363, 1397, 1370, black, white, blue, black, white, blue, and the prices are 359109. And this is how we can get away with the add invalid number value when we are transferring some records from our CSV file into the SharePoint list. And that is how you can take advantage of PowerShell scripting to automate the process for you with and you to just write a few line of code and everything will be taken care of by the PowerShell. So that's bring us to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I've done. And as per usual, if you have any question or if any stage of this video didn't wasn't clear enough for you to understand it, please just let me know in the comment section, write down your questions and I will get back to you as quick as I can. As per usual, if you are new to this channel, you haven't subscribed yet, Please do us a favor and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you are giving us confidence to create and share more educational videos like what you've just watched today and share with others. 
And if this video was helpful, please do not forget to give us a thumbs up. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you all later.